Hello folks and welcome. So Catchy OS, catchy name. I'm going to give you a tour overview and a couple of tips talking about Catchy OS. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up Terminal and just give you system information. And then I'm going to talk about um, a website if you don't know too much about Catchy. So uh, Catchy OS 6.5 series kernel KDE Plasma 527.7. I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. You can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if need be. If you can't watch my videos, any of my videos in one sitting, I would highly suggest subscribing. That way you can watch them at your leisure. And also as a reminder to uh, existing and new subscribers, you can always watch all of my videos on your big screen TVs if you have a smart TV with a YouTube app. Just take a look at the name of my channel. Okay, with that said, I'm going to continue. Um, you can see my icon sets, themes, and etc. I'm using a special mouse pointer or cursor. Uh, I like this yellow one because it's nice and bright and also has some other features. I installed it manually. So you can see my hardware information. I'm going to use Alt and F4 and continue. So I will go on to DistroWatch to give you information about Catchy OS. Resizing stuff on the fly, probably good to go there. And uh, last update looks like August, but more importantly, this is Catchy OS out of Germany. Archbase, Archbase, Archbase distribution, Archbased. So I'm, uh, my video is going to be on the Plasma. They do offer other desktops. Um, they offer live medium, so you can give that a test drive at catchyos.org is where you can download this. I'm going to resize stuff on the fly. It's a very nice looking website. Download catchyos.org if you want this uh, to test drive it and or install it. Alt and F4 to close this screen and uh, this is their welcome screen. It's uh, very nice, very nice. Uh, it's got lots of little things you can click on. So here's the readme thing. Um, you can use multiple kernels, advanced options, all that good stuff. Now since I mentioned this is an arch based distribution, a lot of folks like to install stuff on a terminal but you also have lots of point and click options in here too. And I'll stop, start at apps and tweaks. So you can do a system update here. You can also open up the catchy OS package installer. I will open that up for you just to show you that is very simple point and click. Do searches and I'll pick on the browser category. If you wanted the Falcon, click and install. If you wanted multiples, click, click, click and install. Just using one category for the example. You can also do the repo. Same deal, click and install. Very nice, very nice feature. Catchy OS kernel manager. Lots of different choices in here also. These are kernels. This is the only one that's installed. So I probably want to put another kernel, maybe, or just stick with this one. Lots of choices. You also have some choices when you do the installation. All right, very nice. Um, you have all kinds of little areas you can click on here. You've got the wiki, you've got the forum, you've got uh, et cetera. Closing that. Now, most of the time, uh, a lot of folks that are brand new to Plasma desktops do not realize this until later. You can just start typing and it starts searching for apps. I'll type in Cal. I was looking for calendar. I'm not gonna click it open. You get the idea. It's just trying to find anything with a search criteria. So the tour, I'm gonna start with uh, the desktop, then I'll move to the panel and then the menu. Right click, configure desktop and wallpaper. I will not click everything in this video because this is a fairly standard plasma desktop with a couple of twists. All right, first of all, wallpapers. These are custom. Very nice wallpapers. You can, of course, add your own image. Mouse actions, location, icon, filter, and about. All my videos have timelines and chapters. Right click, configure. Again, I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. I'm certainly capable of 4K, but I thought I'd spare you the smaller icons. I slightly enlarged the text. I'll get to that a little bit later. We can create new stuff, folders, text files, etc. We can also add widgets. Some people like them, some people not so much. 
All right, your little toys, if you want to call it that. Get new ones. So this is a widget with a simple calendar. Non-event calendar, but it's just a simple calendar nonetheless. And it's resizable. All right, so I'm going to move down to the panel starting from the right-hand side. So my subscription key is probably covering this, but it looks like a little square. Peek at desktop. Temporarily shows desktop by moving windows out of the way. Icon next to it is your time date thing with a calendar. You can also right click on it to do other stuff. Okay, alternatives, set the time, add more widgets, so forth. So the arrow has the notifications, KDE Connect, power management, disk, d disks and devices, and then display configuration. And you can also right click on your desktop and configure display configuration there. My wireless thing, microphone thing, wire, um, volume thing, clipboard thing. Now I'm using Voco Screen and uh, NG for recording the software since Simple Screen Recorder was not available. Also, if you install this KDE Plasma, you have the Wayland desktop also available as default. You can also boot into the X11. That's what I did to get this software working. So I'm using the X11 interface. You can do that right out of the login screen. It's normally in the left, top left-hand corner. Moving along, get Plasma integration and default public zone. Right-clicking on the panel, edit mode, you can increase the height and do some more options. You can also resize the widgets if you like. So if I were to grab a hold of him or maybe move him around. All right, close. I'll leave it at that size. Voco screen again. That's what's recording this video. And uh, I think I already brought this up earlier, resizing this on the fly. Catch EOS Plasma Desktop. One more time is what I'm filming in. Next to that is also a terminal box, but I can't do the same thing rather easily like I do in the other one as far as quickly resizing stuff, quickly resizing stuff. Firefox is not your native web browser. I'll show you what that is in a minute, but that's what I have on my panel right now. So the file manager for this distribution is, of course, Dolphin. And uh, for you folks that are fairly new to Dolphin, uh, you've got the resizer for the icons here. You can also do it my way. Hold down the control key if you've got a USB-based mouse or a mouse with a scroll wheel on it. Hold down the control key and scroll up and down. Scrolling. I'm going to click in here one more time without the control key. Scrolling back and forth on the resize. Scrolling forward, scrolling back, scrolling forward, scrolling back. All right, I'm going to hit Control H. That command is uh, with modern Linux file managers to show hidden files and folders. So I manually created the dot icons folder and I brought this um, mouse cursors in from my demo drive and threw it in here. I normally install several of these things at a time using the file manager. Lots of videos on that. But this is called radioactive. And the reason I like to use this mouse curs cursor or pointer is to point this out. It's not only yellow and it's uh, different from the standard ones, which are black and white or gray, but it has a feature where I can point to the top of the box, top of the window. The tip of your pointer has to be below that line that it's pointing to. So right about here, double click and you can resize this window. It's the same thing as clicking that, except the, the footprint on this is so small, it's hard for me to hit that. So I prefer doing it this way your choice. All right, I'm not going to get into the file manager settings today. Alt and F4. Let's continue. So um, I will continue over to settings and you have your appearance, five global themes, application style, plasma styles, scroll bar, colors, window decorations, fonts. The font was 10. I changed that to 12. So that's the default is 10. Just trying to make things a little bit bigger for you folks. Icons and cursors. So again, this was manually installed in dot icons. These five is what you get. Two black, two white, and one gray. Two black, two white, one gray. These are installed in USR share icons folder. This one is installed in dot icons. Whenever you change mouse cursor, you click, you apply, check the size, 
you know, depending on uh, what size you want these pointers, I can go from 24 to 96 on this one. Hit apply, walk over to here, log out of your system and log back in. If not a restart. Otherwise you get the remnants of the old pointer and the new pointer sometimes mixed up. It kind of freaks people out. I recommend that with any Linux distro. Moving forward, talk about workspace behavior. Not yours. So um, single click is what's turned on by default. I immediately change that to double click. I don't like single click on hardly anything. But there is an exception to this rule where I'm going to put two icons on this desktop from the, from the menu down here. And one of them will be a single click and the other one will be a double click, even with this selected. Yeah, I know this sounds strange, but trust me, let me continue. So we can add more users. You can do the accessibility options. Uh, you can uh, do the firewall thing if you want. Uh, the Bluetooth thing and uh, down at the bottom is about. So again, catchy OS Linux. I'm going to close that the conventional way and walk over to the menu. Bob is just a made up name. We can do searches and you can uh, change the icon if you like. I think it's pleasant, but anyways, your choice. And there's nothing in your favorites. That's how it comes out of the box. You add stuff yourself. So I'm gonna skip over all and go to development. That's the first category. And I'm gonna use Kate the text editor just as a guinea pig for sending applications or putting applications on your desktop and panel. So, two ways of doing it. Drag and drop, add icon, right click, add to desktop. So I've got two of these. That's a single click, and that's a double click. You'll have a link symbol there. Same icon, right click, add to panel as a widget, drag and drop. Click out. Single click, single click. Getting rid of the icon, two different ways. Right click, unpin. Right click, not an unpin. Right click, unpin. Okay, I'm gonna unpin this one. To get rid of that, right click, edit, point at it, remove. And close and close. Different things for you folks. Right clicking on that icon, remove icon. Right click clicking on that one, move to trash. A couple of things to think about. Let me get rid of the post it note. All right, these are what comes installed graphics, Gwen view, image viewer, internet. I added the Firefox Chromium. This is what the web browser that comes with is called Catchy. Again, my videos all have timelines and chapters if you need to go back. All right, the rest of these toys come installed. So I just added the Chromium and the Firefox. Multimedia, I added the VLC and the Voco screen. Settings. Oh, uh, I believe the print settings also when I did the install, it was an option. Okay, settings. Um, again, there's the hello, kernel manager, uh, one of the package installers, there's a reference to fish, command line shell. Some people like it, some people not so much. Firewall, Dolphin Default Manager, Info Center, Console, and Octopi, add and remove software. All right, so I'll let this thing uh, load and then I will go to the about screen. All right, and don't forget you can install software obviously out of terminal. So. You know, a lot of people um, prefer terminal and some people prefer a mix. I'm the type of person that I don't care which sometimes is more convenient using terminal and sometimes is more convenient using a package manager. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I'm gonna pick the first one, right click, install and check mark. That's to install. It's that simple to using this. So I'm gonna close and say, I don't wanna do any pending. All right, let me continue. I left off at Octopi. 
cache cleaner, print settings, system monitor, and utilities. All right, so you can see what's in here. I'm really not going to talk about most of these, but I will talk about the screenshot tool. So most of you folks that are making changes to your system, I would highly encourage that you make screenshots. And there are four different ways, or actually several different ways, I should say, of doing this. You can see when I point at it, it also has the keyboard equivalent. Okay. The full screen I really rarely ever use because it makes for a bigger file size. And depending on your wallpaper or background, it could be real busy and high dense. Those files can be huge. I like Active Window myself. Okay. Start key print, whatever. Um, anyways, you can just click, take a screenshot. Usually if you have an active window, that's what I would do. You're making changes in other words. In either case, uh, you know, it's just a recommendation. Places, sleep, restart, shut down, lock and log out. Don't forget, uh, in my case, I had the Wayland and the X11 screen available to me. And the only reason I chose the X11 so I can get this Boco screen recorder with sound and video, sound and video. There is other um, screen capture tool in the Wayland desktop, but it doesn't capture sound at the same time. That's one of the reasons I chose to log in to the X11 desktop. And Simple Screen Recorder doesn't work in that either. I use open source software to record from. Thank you for watching.